Hi folks, it's Florida Man here, bringing you an after-action report on a game I played on the standard diplomacy map back before I went on hiatus. I saved the frames from the game because back then I was already planning on making a video like this. The game was called Good Grief, with no spaces between good and grief, and I played as France. I began the game with one of the most ambiguous openings I've ever played as France. Looking back on it, I think it was actually pretty clever and I'm not sure why I haven't made it a staple of my play as France. I should do some more in-depth analysis of French openings sometime, beyond the beginner level, where I can examine the various interesting French options in detail. In this game, I moved Brest to Picardy, Paris to Gascony, and Marseille to Spain. This opening was not particularly aggressive toward any enemy, but it gave me the ability to defend every home center effectively, while also guaranteeing I would have an influence over Belgium and be able to acquire both Iberian centers. The only downside to this opening is that it's a very noticeable commitment to fighting in the West, since I sent my fleet to Picardy rather than opening to Mid-Atlantic. In other words, I've made it more difficult for myself to turn on Italy early on. Russia opened north, while Germany opened in a way that seemed intended to poke Russia. Interestingly, despite Russia opening north, it seems as if Russia didn't have solid friends in the south, since Austria and Russia bounced in Galicia and Turkey took the Black Sea. In fall, this impression became slightly stronger, since Austria moved Vienna to Budapest, as if planning to attack Romania, and did not prevent Turkey from taking Greece. On the other hand, Turkey might have been friendly toward Russia, because Turkey didn't take advantage of Russia's weakness in the south to secure Romania or Sevastopol, which is probably what I would have done here, unless I didn't feel I could work with Austria. I hadn't mentioned Italy in spring, but that's because all of Italy's 1901 moves are, are basically the safest, most boring moves available to Italy here. That doesn't mean they're wrong, but it does mean they're not really something worth talking about. Fall finds Italy convoyed to Tunis with his other units in Venice and Ionian Sea. Germany makes the interesting choice of not bouncing Russia out of Sweden, while Russia makes the reciprocal choice of attempting to bounce England and Norway, which conveyed to me that the two of them were probably allied against England. England naturally countered that by making a supported move into Norway. As for France, I managed to avoid committing myself to anyone in 1901, and the fruit of those labors was that I got three builds, all from neutral centers. The build phase saw me get a Brest fleet and two new armies, and Germany similarly got a fleet and an army. Russia got two armies, which told me that the plan there was to try to work with Turkey rather than Austria. Turkey got two new fleets, which was an interesting choice and probably not what I would have gone with. It did make him more secure against Italy for sure. Italy got the single Italian fleet that is typical in this situation. England got a London fleet, which, just like the choice to move a fleet into Norway rather than an army, seemed designed to placate Russia more than anything else. Austria got another army because that's the only choice Austria had. In spring 1902 I decided to take the English side in the Western War and I supported England's convoy into Holland as a result. At the same time, I shifted all my other units around to be less aggressive toward England and more aggressive toward Germany. Germany moved anti-English, but none of those moves were successful except the move to Helgoland Bight. Russia de-escalated his border with England and moved all his units toward Austria. Turkey moved against Russia and Italy, and Austria seemingly did exactly the same thing. Italy's moves were mostly unsuccessful, because of Austria's maneuvers. In fall 1902, the battle between Germany and the Anglo-French alliance continued, with a Russian army moving to join in by occupying Prussia. For some reason, Germany has had an army in Silesia this whole time, which I can't imagine helped that relationship. Germany took the North Sea while I took Ruhr. In the south, Turkey took Sevastopol, Russia protected Romania from possible attack, and Italy and Austria each made no progress at all against their respective opponents. In the build phase, Russia destroyed the Romania unit. In spring 1903, I pulled a backstab on England, moving into Irish Sea and taking Holland. The war with Germany was taking too long to pay off. At the same time, England had more thoroughly committed against Germany and also attacked Russia without any provocation, both of which decisions only made him more vulnerable to me. Russia moved into Berlin, which was another nail in the coffin for Germany, who did not issue orders this season, and would clearly be gone pretty soon if he didn't resume issuing orders and make an alliance with England or something. Turkey took Romania while preventing Italy from moving a unit into Ionian Sea. Unfortunately for Turkey, Italy did move forward into East Med. Austria did not get anywhere at all. 
Then we go to fall 1903, Russia supported me into Munich and took Norway from England, while England kept St. Pete and took Sweden. In the south, Italy continued the persistent effort to attack Turkey, while Turkey turned on Austria and allowed Russia to regain Romania. This season marks the beginning of a beautiful relationship between me and Russia, by the way. In the build phase, I got two new fleets and an army, which felt very good, considering that no one besides me and Turkey were growing. Unfortunately, in spring 1904, Italy moved everything he had west, apparently persuaded that I had become the major threat. In fairness, he was correct in this assessment. Although my intention was to use both of my fleets against England, and I meant that, Italy knew that I would eventually come for him, and this moment was, realistically, his last chance to attack me with any chance of support. Russia and I continued working together closely here, but Turkey turned on Russia and took Romania, and England continued to fight fairly effectively, which meant Russia was in fairly serious trouble, and I was essentially on my own in my war with England and Italy. In fall 1904, I took London and Kiel. Russia and I were expecting that Russia would get into Denmark at the time, but England bounced Russia, unfortunately for him, and I supported the move into Kiel because I wanted to make sure I received builds no matter what. Russia made a net gain of one center as well due to attacking Austria, and Austria attacked Italy, allowing Austria's center count to remain constant. My defense of the French homeland was not as vigorous as it might have been, but it was good enough to allow me to retain control of all my centers. With Italy losing a center, the build phase found me prepared to overwhelm him with naval power. Unfortunately for me, England had retreated into Wales, a good position for a counteroffensive. Russia built an army in Warsaw. In spring 1905, England began the counteroffensive against me, taking London and moving to better defend Sweden. I captured Denmark, moved my London unit toward Edinburgh, and repositioned almost everything else toward Italy. Meanwhile, Russia moved to simultaneously defend against Turkey and capture some of Scandinavia. Turkey captured Budapest, and Italy continued to ineffectually oppose the might of the French Empire. Fall 1905, things pretty much followed the course they seemed set to in spring. Russia got Norway from England, I took Denmark and Edinburgh, England took Liverpool and London, Turkey surprisingly allowed Russia to retake Sevastopol, and Italy continued to fail at fighting. In spring 1906, I took Tunis, while Turkey took Naples, bringing the pitiful Italian war against me to an ignominious end. I also chose to take Berlin from Russia, betraying Russia out of concern that Russia and Turkey might be working together now and I positioned to take complete control over the English island. Russia continued attacking England, which was convenient for me. In fall, I was able to get England to support me into Sweden, and England also attacked Norway. Unfortunately for Russia, he was attacked by me, England, and Turkey, leaving the Russian with just four centers. I got five new centers from the season, bringing me into clear solo contention. Unfortunately for everyone else, the only other power left basically strong and, and intact was Turkey who was not in a great position to fight me. Turkey took this moment as an opportunity to chew Russia out in the public press for taking Turkey's stab of Russia as hard as he did, and therefore not properly defending against me. Russia replied that because he was no longer in a position to win, he preferred for me to win over Turkey. The lesson here, folks, is not to be too unpleasant to players you'll need to work with later. Turkey was also a little bit too vigorous with the stabbing. Stabbing Russia again when he did, and also going after Italy at this, uh, at roughly this point in the game was just a mistake when it was necessary to focus more on holding me back than it was on trying to advance quickly for himself. Spring 1907, I scattered as many of my units as I could around to take those last couple of centers I would need to win, moving towards Scandinavia, the Mediterranean, and Eastern Europe to look for vulnerabilities. Fortunately for me, Russia was really not trying to slow me down, less interested in trying to defend against a probable French solo at this point, than in grabbing a last center from England. Russia did move to defend Warsaw, though. Turkey made a good last-ditch effort at defense, but having taken Italy down, and with the fact that his Mediterranean navy being woefully underdeveloped for the task of slowing me down, his efforts were entirely futile. With fall 1907, I took Norway and Rome, and that was game over. Napoleonic victory. I hope you enjoyed this diplomacy video. If so, you should like and subscribe. Comment below for more ideas on diplomacy content that you'd like to see. And if you really want to go above and beyond the norm in showing your support, you could emulate the people whose names now appear on screen, who have contributed by either writing foreign language subtitles 
or joining my Patreon. Please join me in thanking them. And until next time, Florida Man, 